everyone. Welcome back. So we are going to be um, continuing our journey with parallel lines, transversals, and looking at angle measures um, and looking at the corresponding angle measures and really paying close attention to this diagram that we drew yesterday um, and drawing a new diagram for that matter. So today we're going to be talking about how do we describe relationships between angles. So we're going to be building upon um, the equivalent and the congruent angles by talking about how they are related to one another. What are, what, how do they go together? So let's look at an example. And our example um, shows two lines that happen to be parallel like this. And they say that they are of an airport. Okay, so you have an airport runway here and then here. Maybe one that's coming and one that's going. Okay, and then on top of that you have a transversal that's cut across like this. Um, your transversal is where the planes can turn. So we have like a runway A and a runway B and then we have our transversal line, the one that's cut. Um, within this, we have the different angles. We have one, two, three, and four. And then on this runway, we have five, six, seven, and eight. So we have two different lines. Here's one line, one, two, three, four. It looks almost like a four square that you would play when you're um, in elementary school. And then on this side, we have five, six, seven, and eight, which is on runway B. And so they wanna know like, how are these angles um, in relationship to each other? We don't have any measurements, okay? So they're not giving us any measurements in this um, situation. It's our job to look at these angles and use what we've learned over the last couple of days to help us understand how these um, go together. All right, so what do we know about these angles? Well, they want to know what is the relationship between angle 3 and angle 6. So we're looking at angle three and angle six. Okay, angle three and angle six. These are both on the exterior of the parallel lines. So both are exterior. What does that mean? It means that they are not inside the parallel lines. They are on the outside of the parallel lines. So they are both exterior angles. They are also alternates. So remember when we talked about them being um, vertical angles, right? So these are called exterior alternate angles. And the reason why they are alternate angles is because of that vertical angle piece. They're in relationship to each other because of the vertical angles. Oops, sorry, can't see that. So our relationship between angle three and angle six is that they are congruent. So we would say angle three and angle six are congruent and they're congruent because they're alternate exterior angles and the word congruent this is an important word this word congruent if you don't remember it just means equal okay so they're equal measures they would have the exact same measurement that is the relationship to one another they're both exterior angles and they are both congruent to each other. 
All right, we're gonna look at this same example right here. And I want to know, um, what about, I wanna use a different color. Okay, so let's look at this same thing, but I wanna know what about angle two and angle seven? How are they, what's their relationship? So what is the relationship between angle two and angle seven? So here we have angle two and here we have angle seven. Let's talk about those two angles. These two angles are interior, okay? They are inside the parallel lines. They're created when this transversal cut in half, right? So these guys are interior. They're inside the parallel lines and they're alternate. So they're opposites, again, alternate means opposite. Maybe we should add that up there. Opposite, right? And they are formed because of the transversal. So angle two and angle seven are both, um, alternate, interior angles because they are inside. These ones are exterior because they are outside. All right. Um, and that means that when we found their angle measures, because these are congruent, these ones are congruent, that makes two and seven the exact same angle measure. If we look back at all of our drawings that we did over the last two days, they were circled the same colors. So the interior angles are the same colors. So that means that they would have the same angle measures, which means that they would be um, congruent. So our relationship is that angle two, the measure, of angle two, oops, and the measure of angle seven are congruent. They are equal or they are equivalent. Okay, so here is a try it for you. You're gonna use this exact same picture right here and your try it You, this is like um, already here. Your try it says that in this example, you have a bunch of different angles. Um, they say that the measure of angle four equals 84 degrees. What is the relationship of angle four with angle five. So I wanna know the measure of angle five. Okay, so that's the first one. I wanna know what is their relationship? How do they go together and how do you know? And then um, I also wanna know what is the relationship between the measurement of angle four and the measurement of angle three. How do these two measures go together? All right, go ahead and hit pause right now so you don't hear me explaining this to you. And then you can hit play when you are ready. All right, so we are looking at the measurement of angle, um, the measurement of angle five, which is right here, and the measurement of angle four. Both of these are um, interior, right? They're both inside. So they are interior, alternate angles. 
they are congruent, meaning they are going to have the same measurement because they are in the exact same spot. They're just opposite of each other. So they are congruent. So measure four and measure five are both going to equal 84 degrees. Okay, so that is the measurement of angle five. And now we wanna talk about the relationship between the measure of angle three and the measure of angle four. Well, the measure of angle three and the measure of angle four. One is on the outside and one is on the inside. So the measure of angle three is exterior. And the measure of angle four is interior. So already we are seeing that um, they are just a little bit different. Okay, so already we are seeing that they are, that they're different. Okay, um, if the measurement here is 84, they are not congruent. So they are not congruent because one is outside, one is inside, and we know that they have to form that right angle, just like, or not a right angle, a supplementary, just like we did in these ones. So this one is not congruent because if it's 84 plus some angle that we don't know, we're gonna get to 180, right? So the measure of angle three has to equal, so we're gonna subtract minus 84, minus 84, this gives us 10, 17, 6, 6. So we get a total of 96 degrees. So our measure of angle, um, four is going to be 96 degrees. They are opposite angles there. Because when they add up, they are going to equal our total of 180. Alrighty. So congruent not congruent, they have to work together. This one is going to be the same because they are both interior. All right, go ahead and answer your essential question. How do we describe relationships between angles? And then check your level of understanding throughout this um, unit. How are you feeling about finding angle measures? about looking to see what's equal, what's not equal, using parallel lines and vertical angles. And then if you have any questions, you can go on back to the Google Meet and ask for help. Otherwise, you can work on any of your practice work and make it a great day.